Shannon, hello, and Carolyn Swanson. Um, and um, I'm wondering if the rest of the board members are on. Uh, I see John Path, Christy. Uh, she's muted. There you go. There we go. And John yes. Walton, and Brian as well. and John Walton. Uh -huh. And Adrian is there as well. Adrian Clark. Hi, Adrian. I don't, I, I don't, I just see Ralph. I don't see anything else. Hi. I am very technically challenged. There's Adrian. Hi. How's it going? Okay. Well, I, I mainly wanted to make sure we had a, a quorum for the board before I continue on. So uh, we do have that. So I will continue. Um, written communication. I have that we received um, emails regarding the swimming program and reopening those services um, from the community member. And um, anything else that the board that received, I don't believe we received anything else other than COVID related items. That's, that's my recollection too. And we recently did get the swim uh, communication. Okay. Yep. All right, great. Um, now we'll move on to board member comments. We'll go in order as usual, and I'll start with Christy. Well, it, um, it seems to in some ways get easier as time goes on, but I, I, I also believe it, it uh, is in so many ways more trying. But I'm so impressed with the communications coming in from the district office and uh, the amount of work the entire staff, student body, and everybody throughout the district is doing. So in these really challenging times, I'm very impressed. And I thank everybody for everything they're doing. Great. Thank you, Christy. Um, John Path? I have no comments. Thank you all. But I, I do, well, other than to say thank you, teachers, for your efforts and, frankly, staff uh, in continuing this. It's, uh, it's really a chore, and I know um, you know, it's up and down uh, frequently. Really appreciate the, the work and the, frankly, just jumping in head first because we had no choice, but thank you again. Okay. Thank you, John. Brian? Uh, I'll keep it brief. Uh, thanks to everybody for uh, still being there and showing up in this uh, different way. Because um, this is, uh, I, it's, and it's not been fun for a while now. Um, and uh, Adrian, thank you, especially for showing up. And I gotta say, looking kind of shaggy there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good though, but you, know, you can tell the passage of time. It's like that's how we'll that's how we'll log the passing of time is is uh, Adrian's shaggy hairdo. <laughs> and um, Adrian, I won't forget you at the end, okay? Um, okay. John Walton, any comments? Uh, no comments tonight. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just want to uh, just say briefly that um, also thank you to everybody. Just this has been like a, a running in place marathon. Not that I've ever ran a marathon, but <coughs> imagine what the marathon is like. <laughs> um, but I just, I'm starting to miss people. I'm starting to miss that interaction that um, we used to have. And um, I just hope this all ends soon for everyone. So anyway, thank you all for being here. And uh, we'll go now to the student representative. Adrian, go ahead and share your uh, comments with us. Hi, guys. Uh, well, actually, I was just about to ask the board if I should get a haircut, but now I guess I know I should. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Other than that, um, right now, uh, the leadership class is, uh, they have a committee of freshmen who just finished the teacher appreciation video uh, for teacher appreciation week that's coming up. Um, that video will come out in the superintendent's morning message. So uh, look out for that. Um, and other than that, I've just uh, been keeping busy. This is my second to last uh, meeting with all of you. So uh, oh, yeah. I appreciate everything. Yeah. Well, and thank you, Adrian, for your dedication to being on, on the board with us. Um, more to come on that later, but thank you for um, taking your time to do that. It's a good experience for you as well, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Thank you. 
Um, okay, we'll move on to superintendent report, Dr. Porras. Thank you, Madam President. I, um, yes, thank you, Adrian, I, for all of your service. Really just, uh, I am um, uh, just reminded of our opportunity we had to work together that day at the training at the county office and watching your leadership with your peers and, and watching what you do. And uh, you are a remarkable young man. We're very lucky to have you here. And um, we've had uh, quite a um, quite a busy last couple of weeks, uh, mostly just kind of doing the business of, of the school district during this time. And I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll save most of those comments for the update uh, at the information discussion section. I did want to make note though, and um, just give some kudos to um, all of the departments, certainly, but in particular right now um, to uh, food service for the remarkable work that the, uh, the lunch ladies continue to do. I've been going in there to pick up the lunches, to put in the van and always with a smile, always laughing, always just ready to do whatever they need to do. And, and it's making such a tremendous difference. And, you know, they don't get a lot of credit sitting back there in the kitchen, but they're, they're, they're doing it. And um, under uh, Director Lips um, leadership, it's been pretty remarkable. And I also want to thank um, Human Resources because behind the scenes right now are uh, a lot of interviews. Um, and so also thanks to the folks on the panels, um, but lots of, of business happening back there in the background and HR is uh, getting it done along with Angela um, all uh, remotely. And um, in fact, right now we're currently doing the, the interview interviews for the high school principal and Adrian's part of that, thankfully, and uh, a big group. And, so a lot of business with the district happening. I just want to thank um, everyone who's involved with that. Other than that, I'll save the rest of my comments for later. All thank right. you. Thank you. Okay, now we are on to uh, PGUSD staff comments. Um, before we start that, I just kind of want to remind everybody that's, that's online with us that uh, the staff comments, of course, will be staff. But then when, um, if you can just say, you know, that it's a staff comment because um, I may not know if that your staff potentially. Mm. So we'll go ahead and open it up um, for staff comments and we'll we'll give um, a few minutes for that. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> uh, Matt Bell, staff comment. The high school has its annual senior awards scholarship night. It will unfortunately not be live. It will be a montage of videos from the scholarship donors. Some are uh, amazing. <laughs> May 19th at 6.30. So um, that is going to be uh, just a, a, a video that will be posted somewhere on the website. Is that right, Matt? Yes, I see him nodding. Okay. All right, thank you for that. May 19th. Sean Roach, PGMS, promoting eighth grade swag distribution tomorrow. What are they going to get? Dot, dot, dot. It's a secret. <laughs> Will we have a video or anything for that, Sean? He's going to have to type it in because he's, he's muted, I think. Yeah, I see you now. It's going to be on local TV. Wow. Aren't we special? <laughs> so do we know what channel? <laughs> I want the details here. K KCBA. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go up to uh, Sean Keller. Drinks from Crema. Crema. Totally yeah. legit. <laughs> Uh, Corinne Gordon, thank you to PGHS leadership class and admin for the senior graduation signs. Oh, I ordered mine. I so uh, during public comment, uh, Carolyn, potentially okay, which we're going to go to next. Um, Ani Silva. I commend all of our teachers as they have embarked on distance learning and attending to the emotional needs of our students. We have the best teachers in the state and the nation. I am proud. I am so proud of our teachers and administration staff. Everyone is doing what is best for our students. Agreed. Sean Roach, one more thing. 
There's a documentary coming out about the eighth grade field trip to Hamilton. Ooh, cool. Can't wait to hear more about that. Matt Kelly, and this is um, director of um, facilities, Matt Kelly, correct? Yes. I believe. Okay. Uh, custodial maintenance and grounds are back to work as of yesterday. Oh, very nice. Barbara Martinez. Adult school leaders met with assembly member Mark Stone and Senator Monning's office yesterday and today to advocate for our continued funding for adult education. We discussed the effects of COVID has had on our schools and districts statewide. Both legislators were compassionate and encouraging to our stories. We are in it together for sure. Beth Cena. Thank you to Forest Grove PTA for our Michael's gift certificates. So generous. Forest Grove staff is so appreciative. So. Diane Barone, on behalf of all our state preschool families, I would like to thank the district for meals provided. It's probably one of their highlights of the day. Aw. Hey, hi, Diane. Thank you. Barbara Martinez, thank you, Matt Kelly. Buck Rogerman. Excited that construction on Forest Grove's new playground structure has begun. Also, happy Teacher Appreciation Week, everyone. Carrie Serpa, you beat me to it, Mrs. Cena. Thank you, PTA. Also, thank you to Forest Grove's counselors, Ms. Roach, for leading a caring circle in my classroom today. Nice. Thank you all. We'll give it a second here. We'll open it up to public comment. Okay, so we're going to go to public comment now. Um, I am going to read my little script here. Um, actually, this is uh, individuals desiring to address the board. Any items of interest to the public will be heard. Comments may be limited to three minutes with a total time of 20 minutes per agenda item. Public comment will also be allowed for each agenda item prior to board action. This meeting is a business meeting of the board conducted in public. Please note the Brown Act limits the board's ability to respond to public comment, especially in this particular case. The board may choose to direct items to administration for future agenda. So, for this item, please put in um, PC for public comment, so we know that it's a public comment. Um, any other comments and um, notes will be read later. Um, but I'll go ahead and open it to public comment. And while we're waiting there, I did have a request to um, open up an, uh, for one public member, uh, Carolyn Swanson. So I will go ahead and allow that. Um, and we do have the three minute um, limit. So if Mr. Mejia, could be, if you were able to open Carolyn Swanson to speak. It's open. I think she's open now. It's open. Hi, Carolyn. Go ahead. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, uh, thank you for unmuting me. I wanted to let you guys know we did Dorothy's um, triennial IEP this morning via virtual chat and that was the first time i've ever done that in my whole life and it went really well and i just it almost made me cry how wonderful how everyone just put so much effort into it it was like maybe a three or four hour meeting because it's a triennial which means we have all of her assessments during that time we had people uh, from all over the country, really, uh, chiming in because we've got the phys ed or psych ed, sorry, uh, contractor as part of it um, and all of her other service providers to make the accommodations and uh, services for Dorothy. And I just really appreciated that. And I wanted you to hear my voice and hear it in my voice that it was a really amazing teamwork moment this morning. So thank you to uh, Wogeman, as Dorothy calls Mr. Rogeman, and um, and everyone involved. It was so great. Great. Thank you for sharing, um, Carolyn. Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and there. I have one public comment here from Katrina McFarlane. 
I want to thank all teachers and staff for their hard work throughout the school year, but especially during this difficult time. You all have stepped up and done an amazing job and we truly appreciate all you have done. Thank you so much for that comment. I agree 100%. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and um, move on. Um, again, any comments that are later added, we will read on the log. Now we will move on to consent agenda. Again. Debbie, may I add a quick comment? Yeah, go ahead, John. One of the things I had in my notes, which uh, I, I failed to pick up earlier, uh, I really want to thank Matt and Song. If you walk from uh, Country Club Gate, you can now walk all the way down to Forest Grove on sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And that is done through the city uh, and, frankly, T, whatever it is, TMCA, TCMA, uh, Money and Measure X from, uh, but that planning started in 2016, but our contribution to it in part was the additional, um, basically where, where it cuts into our property. And that is very, very nice. And I really want to say thank you to Matt and Song and frankly, whomever else may have helped on that. Great. Thank you, John. Okay, consent agenda. The consent agenda are items considered to be routine and or may have been discussed at a previous board meeting. There are no discussions on these items unless a member of the board has specific questions and or requests an item to be removed. Approved items are considered in full and adopted as recommended. Consent agenda, um, are there any comments or questions from the board? Christy? Uh, no. John Path? I'd like to pull item F, please, which is uh, the IAMPS contract, which is not clear in the packet. And Matt and I have been back and forth, but I want to make sure I'm aware of what, what this means. Okay. So we will pull that and um, we're going to put that at the end of action or do we want to put that in the beginning? You can uh, put that wherever uh, the board would like to have that on to action. Typically, we put it at the end of action. Yeah, I'm trying to locate it, but I won't worry about that right now. Okay, so we're going to pull item F and we will place that at the end of the um, action item, which will be uh, eight. G. G. Uh -huh. G. Okay. Any other, um, uh, Brian, any comments on consent? No, I'm okay, thank okay. you. Okay, John Walton? Um, I don't have anything to pull. I just, under item C, the acceptance of donations, I just really want to thank the Forest Grove PPA for their donation to help put in the uh, new playground equipment at Forest Grove. I really much appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and make a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended, uh, removing item F. Seconded. Okay, so we have um, a motion to approve as amended from Debbie Crandall, second by Christy Dawson. Roll call, please. Christy Crandall. Aye. Christy Dawson. Trustee Path. Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student advisory vote? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Great. Thank you. Passes 5-0. Okay. Um, moving right along. Action discussion item A is waiver of board policy 6142.4 community service hours for promotion. So we did something similar to this last, exactly the same actually maybe, um, last meeting, but for the high school, this is also to waive the uh, community service hours for uh, qualifying um, eighth grade promotion to ninth grade. Um, I'm just gonna go right to the board if there's any questions for uh, Principal Roach. Christy? Not at this time, thanks. On path. How many students are we uh, talking about, Sean? He's muted. There he is. Eight to 10. Thank Eight you. Eight to 10. Was that it, John? That's it. Okay, Brian? Uh, I'm okay, thank you. Okay, John Walton? Uh, no question. Okay. Um, Unless, uh, Sean Roach, you have anything to add, 
um, I will ask for a motion to approve this item. Oh, sorry. Wait, um, public comment. <laughs> sorry. Um, I'll go ahead and open this up for public comment. Um, Sean Roach does not have anything else to add. We'll go ahead and wait for a few seconds. Please put PC in front of your comment if it's public comment. Okay, I'll go ahead and bring it back to the board for a motion, please. I move we pass the waiver of board policy 6142.4 community service hours for promotion. Second. Okay, we have a, a motion um, by Christy Dawson, second by John Paff. Roll call, please. Trusty Crandall. Aye. Trusty Dawson. Aye. Trusty Paff. Aye. Trustee Swanson. Aye. Trustee Walton. Aye. Student advisory. Aye. Okay, thank you. Pass five zero. Uh, thank you, Mr. Roach. And um, I think it's great that um, we're going to get ex be excited to see them promote this Friday tomorrow. No, the 19th. The 19th, he said, I think. Okay, moving on. Um, action discussion item B. This is our um, Pacific Grove Unified School District Governance Handbook. This was a handbook that um, I believe Christy Dawson, you asked for this to 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 uh, be brought, or we we have had this for um, a while. I'm not sure, Dr. Porras. This is new, right? We actually got together on our meeting a year in a year ago, October, mm -hmm. to kind of go over all of this and figure out um, how it is. I think what's happened here is that somehow it was asked to come back to just oversee it. Is that right, Ralph? Once a year to just kind of take a look at it or something? Correct. The board had uh, requested that this be brought back annually to be approved. Um, and uh, this had come up in the discussion during our special meeting as well. So, um, yeah. uh, and so we're bringing it back for approval and um, typically comes around the same time as the handbooks is what we, we guessed. So certainly the board can choose to table it for another time if you want. Uh, otherwise, um, we didn't receive, I didn't receive any comments for any edits or additions or changes. Um, so uh, from anyone thus far, however, um, it's up to the board in terms of how you'd like to entertain this conversation. Okay. Um, well, for me, um, there's no changes, so I don't, and, and I've read through it a few times. Um, I, I would make, I'm going to bring it back to the board, but I would make a recommendation that we bring this back in two years. Um, I think we did, um, we have our meeting, um, sometime in September, I believe, and, um, we'll see what happens at that point. If we need to make changes, we can bring it back, but otherwise, if there's no changes, I don't see a lot of changes happening in, in less than a year. So um, that would be my recommendation. Um, Madam no. President, if I may, I'm sorry to interrupt. Sure. Uh, I, I did forgot, I had it on my notes here and I blanked right over it. Uh, we did have one trustee ask if we could, uh, if we could postpone it because um, there were some other edits they'd like to discuss, but uh, oh. perhaps this meeting wasn't the time. I apologize. I forgot about that. Oh, okay. So, so the recommendation is to table this, not discuss it so we can no, that was just that was just one trustee's request. That's all. Okay. Well, let me go ahead and go down the down the list. Christy, did you have anything else to add other than what you've said? Well, I was going to agree with you. I don't think this is something we need to review annually. I think it hadn't been reviewed for a while, and I I, I love that we went into detail with it on that special meeting. But it's not something I think that needs to come up like the handbooks uh, frequently and should be addressed when it needs to be. I'm very happy the way it looks right now. Okay. I feel like I'm always such a picky one. So I'm happy now. Okay. And you're okay with it coming back in two years? I, I don't even think it has to come in two years. I think it needs to come when the board feels a need to make a change. But it's not something that it needs to be massaged Frequently, it's it's a wonderful guide, and I think it's uh, really solid after the work we did. Okay, John Path. Yeah, so I think it should come up about every other year, not because we need to massage it, but because we need to read it. So, yeah, um, I would say, and I would say actually, uh, this is really a fall item, not a spring item, but that's me. Okay. So I would go fall of twenty twenty one. 
fall of 2021. Okay. Um, so that's, uh, that would be a year and a half then. Yeah. I mean, it's still, then you're on a two year schedule after that. You, yeah. you, know, you just have to cut in somewhere. Okay. Um, Brian. Um, I'm fine with, the. Uh, uh, John Pass recommendation, bring it back fall and a year and a half from now would be okay. Okay. All right. John Walton. Yeah, I I'm the trustee <laughs> Ralph was referring to. I I uh I think actually it's funny when I got sworn in, I think this was on the agenda for the very first meeting I was at. And uh to be honest with you, I didn't have time that time to read the whole thing. Um, this time I did, I think it's a great document. I think it could use some updating and editing, uh, nothing major substantial, but you know, I've, I've restrained my, uh, my red pen for so long. I'm just aching to go at a policy or something. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Knock yourself out. I, I, I would prefer, you know, if we, if we aren't going to vote to approve it tonight, I'm okay with that. I, I would like to see it updated before I vote to approve it again, but. Um, I can go anyway on. Okay. Um, um, Adrian, did you have any feedback on this item? No, no I did not. Okay, thank you. Well, um, I think um, I'll make a motion to uh, approve this handbook and have it come back fall of 2021. And in between that time, we can make our edits to be approved at that time. Is that what John had said? I missed the last part of what he said. Does that work for you, John, to wait and do the edits later? Or are you feeling like we need to pull it now? No, I, there was nothing substantive. It's just minor things. I'm fine with Debbie's motion. Okay, good. All right, Debbie. So that's your motion? Yeah, that's my motion. Seconded. Okay. We have a motion by Debbie Crandall, seconded by Christy Dawson. Roll call, please. Public Christy. comment? Oh. <laughs> I don't know why I think that's funny. I can continually forget. I, I know you guys are there, but it's it's out of sight, out of mind. I'm so sorry. Okay, public comment is open on this uh, governance handbook for the board. Please put PC before your comment. Just wait a few seconds. Okay, we have... Uh, Carolyn Swanson, I'm glad to see it will be reviewed next fall. Thank you. Well, a year from next fall. A year yeah. From next fall. Well. 2021. Next Correct. Next fall, because it's, it's fall May, 20. so next fall would be a year and a half, uh, about, a little bit less, right? Okay. My next fall is coming forward. 2021. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, see no other public comment. Now I'll bring it back and I'll go ahead and we, we do had a motion um, by myself, Debbie Crandall, and second by Christy Dawson. Um, all uh, roll call, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Paff? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student Advisory? Aye. Okay, thank you. Pass 5-0. Moving on to adoption of resolution number 1053, designating authorized agents to sign school orders. Um, this is um, an, an annual thing that we do, but due to our summer school program and logistics, we're adding an additional signer, which would be uh, Director of Human Resources, Billy Mankey. Anything else to add to that, Dr. Porras? No, uh, no matter, President. Other than that, no, it's, uh, it's summer schedules, uh, not not just the summer program. Um, and uh, director, it should be director two, um, um, maybe. But uh, she's also one of the people that are here in the summertime, which is why we we wanted to add her name as well. She's available. And I'm sorry, you cut out a little bit for me. Can you repeat the last part of that? Uh, it, was there somebody in addition to, no, uh, to no. Billy? Just us three. No. Oh, okay. So, so that's you, Song, and then Billy. That's correct. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, any questions from the board? Christy. 
Uh, Ralph, just clarification. You don't all, is it two out of three that need to sign in a given document like this? No, this no. is authorizes uh, in the summertime, sometimes there's not everybody here and we need, if the two signers, for example, if I'm, if I'm not here, um, then uh, Assistant Superintendent um, Chin Ben Dib could sign for us. If, if she and I are both gone, then there's no one. So that's why I wanted to add the third person. Oftentimes just one signature, but so we need- my Okay, so you need one signature in order for it to move forward. Usually that's the case. Sometimes they may ask for two, but usually it's one. Thank you, that was my question. Mm -hmm. Okay, John Paff, any questions? No. Okay, Brian? No questions, thank you. Okay, John Walton? No questions. Okay, thank you. I'll bring it back for, um, we'll open it up to public comment. See how I did that real smooth. <laughs> Um, great. And open this up to public comment and give it a few seconds if you have any um, questions, comments, item. Okay, seeing none at the moment, I'll go ahead and bring it back to the board for a motion, please. I move we accept adoption of resolution number 1053 designating authorized agents to sign school orders. I will second that. Okay, we have a motion by Christy Dawson, seconded by Brian Swanson. Roll call, please. Christy Crandall. Aye. Christy Dawson. Aye. Christy Paff. Aye. Christy Swanson. Aye. Christy Walton. Aye. Student advisory. Aye. Okay, thank you, Pass 5 0. Uh, next item is uh, Chrome, Chromebook fleet replacement. Um, I've read through this, um, there's a lot of detail. So I'm just going to um, actually ask um, Mr. Mahi if you could please give us a, a high level summary. Um, Actually, if you're available for questions, I'm going to go right to the board. And if there's any questions, um, then we can discuss anything um, from there. Sure. Debbie? Yeah. John? I, I would like a high level summary, actually. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Mejia, are you available now? Yes. Okay. There you are. Yeah. If you could just go ahead and give us a, a, level, a high level summary of the plan here and the options. So, as we move forward, especially with everything uh, going on with uh, COVID, we are in a position to where we are more than likely having to uh, replace our existing, which is already exceeded uh, its, its auto update policy, uh, which most of them lost the ability to continue to be updated in October 2019. So that means that they, although they're still functional, they're no longer receiving updates. So while we don't have any state testing this particular year, um, it will be an issue in the future as, as those secure browsers are dependent on the freshest version of uh, Chrome OS. So we see the, the need to bring on a new fleet. This fleet has been, um, the existing fleet has been around for about six, seven years. Um, and so it's, it's reached that, that point. Um, we went to different vendors, got different quotes. Because of COVID, the prices on Chromebooks are continually skyrocketing. Right now, um, most quotes that I received were um, at 360 to 400 per device, um, which, is, which is very high for the number of devices we need. Um, I was able to secure a quote from Dell, uh, for the price of two forty per device plus the twenty five dollars of the Google for the Google license, so that's actually a very good price. Um, obviously, I don't believe we're in a position to be able to buy it outright, but they did offer the ability to finance this over five years. Um, if we take the option of five years, it's at a zero point two financing, uh, which would come out to approximately one hundred and twenty three uh, thousand per year. For the next five years. So we're thinking that one of the ways to project this out is uh, through Measure A. Um, and Measure A on, on a yearly, that would be from each round of Measure A or two issuances that we get per year uh, would be about 62,000 uh, per, 
per round of measure eight. So that'll give us the 123 for the year. Okay. So, um, okay. So um, I'll go ahead and bring it back to the board now. I'm sure there'll be more discussion here. Um, Christy, did you have questions? Yeah, I did. As I look through option one and two, uh, I noted that there's a, a substantial savings in interest costs. So I was all for option one, but then I see at the end uh, that that you guys recommend option two. So uh, with with more interest, can you tell me why that is? The, the I, reason for option two is because we are able to uh, offset some of those costs through the COVID-19 stimulus fund that the district is receiving. Uh, that's 105000 But we're also waiting on reimbursement from E-rate from our network upgrade project. That should be approximately 157000 The problem is that we don't know when uh, USAC will approve or reimburse the district 157000 So um, if we do option one, that would mean that our annual, we would have three payments, uh, or, or in other words, uh, three payments, one per year of 198,000 uh, per year, which would mean that we would have to set aside around uh, probably another 100,000 per round of measure A. Um, so along with the network upgrade in place, um, we didn't want to put ourselves in a position where we had very little or nothing to to move with in measure a to continue to support uh, students and teachers in terms of technology so the option two although it is higher interest rate um or is more an interest cost does give us the ability to have that that space to use measure a funds to continue to support especially uh, in light of covid um, all the different technology pieces that are now moving and we can still, as soon as we get the reimbursement from E-rate, the approximate 157000 plus the 105000 that we're getting from the COVID stimulus, we can put towards this to pay, pay off uh, this uh, purchase sooner. There is no penalty for paying sooner um, through, through Dell as well. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that, Jonathan. Okay. Is that it for you, Christy? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. John Paff? Sure. There's um, there's many things in here which are potentially duplicates of things which we already have because that is there's common. For example, there's a uh, 65 watt AC adapter to 250 volt uh, UPS power cord and a number of other odds and ends. And if you went through, I assume those are not actually separable. No, and uh, also to touch to that the those chargers um the new chromebooks are no longer being charged with the the standard issue power cables are all usb-c chargers now okay uh well that kills that anyway so um is there a resale market for our current uh fleet there is and i've i've looked into that um but it's not very much they're they're giving me uh, a quote of about anywhere between three to six dollars per device. Um, I do I do recommend that we hold on to those devices um, so that we can continue to issue those out to students to use at home for those students who have indicated that they need that support. Uh, so they're still usable. Um, they're just not receiving updates, but they can we can have the new fleet in the classrooms to extend the longevity of them and have uh, the devices to the from the old fleet to be able to send home to have students be able to um, connect from home and be able to to do work on them as well for as long as they will last. Three to six dollars, huh? For two thousand devices and six year old. Okay. Um, so actually, it sounds like you'll be supporting two different uh, 4,000 devices pretty soon. Yes. Okay, how many have come back bad so far over the summer or over the spring quarter? So over, since we started issuing them to students to take home, we have maybe received 
about 10 back that are no longer in working condition. But over the last five years, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, keep going. I was going to say, over the last five years, we have probably spent about $20,000 on repairs for the existing Chromebook fleet. Okay. I do wanted to add that I do at this point recommend that we don't continue to pay for repairs on the existing fleet as I don't feel that I feel that the price we pay to repair them far exceeds the, the price that, that they're actually worth at this particular moment. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay, Brian, any questions? Yeah, uh, I think just one. So right now we're looking at $265 per unit, um, and you had said that the, the prices had increased significantly. What roughly uh, had they been previously before the huge demand? So they were fluctuating between uh, 275 and a little under 300. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now they've, they've gone up considerably <laughs> okay um and somewhere in there there was a mention of the of um leasing as a possibility uh, I, it seems like it was uh, dismissed and i'm sure for good reason but could you touch on that a little bit as to why the, the idea of just leasing something um was kicked to the curb right away we did look and got quotes for uh, device as a service models. Um, the, the issue with device as a service models for our district is that because, because these companies are, are, are essentially leasing not only the device, but also their service, that's how they, that's how they are making their money. Um, they would essentially manage the cost for us. Now this makes sense when we're talking about 15 to 16,000 devices. Um, as some school districts have, but when we're managing a fleet of between 18 and 2,000, the, the cost far exceeds the amount. So the quote I got for the device as a service models had us spending the same amount of money for half the devices. Okay, that's a good answer. Thank you. Okay, John Walton. Uh, thanks. I, th I think, you know, Jonathan, you answered most of my questions. I appreciate it. You know, I, I will say, you know, it's been tough since COVID, I agree, even in my job, the, the supply chain has been so disrupted that it's hard to even get equipment, let alone equipment at a good price. So I think you did a good job, uh, you know, locking in that price, that price point. Um, you know, also, I mean, I think your idea to just save the old equipment as loaner equipment to send home maybe over the summer or as we move into some hybrid model next year um, is one. I mean, usually a laptop over four years old, usually I have to pay for it to be taken away as e-waste. So three bucks for it, it's pretty amazing, but you know, it's probably, probably better just to hang on to it rather than send a new Chromebook home with a kid that you know, they might accidentally drop or spill something on. It's probably, probably less risky just to send an old one home and uh, not pay you know, to replace them or fix them is just, you know, see them as more disposable as it goes on. So um, I think option two is a good option. I understand you're paying a little more interest, but I think it makes sense. And, you know, I think it's going to be up to you and the, and the administration staff and Matt and the, uh, the major a bond oversight committee, you know, you've got a lot of, I think you're finding a lot of old technology that you're having to replace. And so you might have to reprioritize, uh, help reprioritize some of the ideas um for how those monies get spent in the out years. So I appreciate you keeping an eye on that. But um I don't think I have any questions. Those were more comments. So I'm I'm supportive of the item. Okay. Um okay. Um I had a question regarding the auto update. Um this is probably um maybe even a dumb question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Um, the auto update, um, that's for like windows and all that kind of update, but you could still get that update by manually doing it. We, we have done that to the Chromebooks in our existing fleet. You could only get them so far. Um, it's, 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 it's built in at the engineering level, how far they'll, they'll be able to receive. Updates. 
So we've pushed them as far as they can go at this point. Okay. And the 157,000 for the E E rate reimbursement. Now, I thought that was part of the budget for the network replacement. That that's money that we're getting reimbursed um, to our district that we can uh, the the when we brought this to the board uh, was decided that we would uh, put that money back into technology. But really, we we were we are able to use it within technology for either or. I guess I just wonder what happens to that budget that we approved for that network because that was part of it, right? It was part of how we we're going to pay for the network but now we're using it for this. Um, I, I believe that that we spoke about the, the 150s, the approximate 157 from E-rate reimbursement as being a reimbursement um, with the option to help pay off the loan sooner, but the, the loan is structured within the current rounds of Measure A, so that's just the reimbursement we're getting for spending the amount of money. Um. I'm not sure I follow that. Um, so I understand. I understand that we can use it for for technology. That's that's fine. But um, again, I'm going to repeat my question because I didn't. Maybe I didn't didn't understand. Um, that 157 was put into the agreement of redoing the network project. Yes or no? I think Song has her hand raised. Oh, okay. Song, hi, Song. Hi. Maybe I, I um, you know, let me give it a try on this uh, 157,000. We have to spend the money in the network, and you are correct, um, Madam President, then uh, we'll get reimbursement for the E-rate, but we did not account for E-rate dollars to pay for the network uh, because it's zero interest from uh, AMS. Um, and and so we can finance it based on the allocation measure A, and also plus uh, we have a little bit of reserve balance in within measure A. Um, what's that? As long as we don't touch measure D within measure A, we're able to do that. Okay, and so we're still going to be able to do the network replacement as planned as well without touching the general fund or any other monies. That's correct. Just within okay. okay. That's really the bottom line what I wanted to get at. So thank you. Um, then I had another question regarding the measure A um, funds and how this is because this is a pretty large amount either option one or two. And I, I'm sure you've thought about how that's going to affect all the other tech needs that we need in those quarters. So how is that going to be determined and how is that going to affect us? So other than the obvious, yeah, it's going to, it's going to, you know, impact how much we have available to spend um, for our usual allotments of, of measure a um, we have been bringing this up at the tech committees going, going uh, far back now um, since, since I started this year at this position to talking about the, the re possible replacement of the phone book fleets. What we have to do too is uh, be able to prioritize uh, the expenditures. One of the things that we've, spoken about is although we want to continue to to support the flat panel displays in, in gradual increments we know too that uh, because of distance learning um, you know we find that at times it's it's going to be better to uh, spend the money on Chromebooks as, as since they've become the, the main device that we're using especially in light of, of COVID uh, more so than equipment that we're having in the classroom that's uh, going to essentially as it is right now just sitting in the classroom right now not being used so we know that it's going to be um, less resources uh, but we'll just continue to prioritize as we have been we're trying to project our cost out a uh, minimum of five years so that we have that in, in mind as we're planning and moving forward I've been working with uh, Matthew Martin. we've been working with the tech committee as well letting them know that that's kind of the the direction we want to take is uh, to be able to project our costs um, out so that we have an accurate budget of what things are costing us and how much we have to um, be budgeting for um, as, as, as opposed to letting it go and then 
being forced to replace the, a fleet at a much higher cost than, than what it is cost, than going to cost mm -hmm. us right now. Yeah. And I know we can um, uh, always take more out than we had originally budgeted. It's there. We just decided to only take a certain amount. I just want to make sure that there's um, no known projects. I know things come up that we don't know about, but there's no known projects that are planned that um, if we use this money for for the the Chromebooks, that it's not going to not allow us to do that. Right. Are there any big projects like that? Well, I think the the bigger projects that have been spoken about at the tech committee at this point, really, these are the, the three major costs that we've been uh, having this year have been uh, the SIS replacement, which we did not, um, there was no way we could anticipate that was going to happen. The network uh, upgrade, which is uh, it's essential and the need and the Chromebook fleet replacement. Outside of that, those are going to be the three biggest uh, tech projects that, that we can foresee. There really isn't other tech needs that are going to be more of a fiscal impact than that. Uh, I think the 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 next item on our list is uh, the iPads um, for Forest Grove and Robert Down, and uh, we're working on being able to spread that out to be able to to bring those on as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, now, uh, not to prolong this too much, but I do want to come back to the to the board to get a clear. Um, well, actually, let me open this up for public comment and then we'll come back to the board for my next question. Go ahead and open this up for public comment. If there's any questions, comments regarding this item, please put PC before your comment. I'll just give it a few seconds. Okay, seeing, seeing, well, uh, this is from Matthew Binder. You you can unmute me. Oh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Mejia, would you mind unmuting um, Matthew Binder? Thank you. Thank you. Good good evening, everybody, and and thank you, Jonathan, for laying it out so clearly. I just wanted to weigh in. Jonathan did a great job, kind of explaining the the impacts and the details of of the this particular proposal. But I want to reiterate something that he had spoken about at the end there, which was the notion of, of projecting this out. We're now operating on a longer term range of uh, budget projections from the committee standpoint. And I want to make sure that people understand that we have uh, kind of laid this out for five to six years ahead. Um, and it's hard to imagine, you know, when it rains, it pours. And we seem to have gotten quite a, quite a, uh, a doozy this year with regards to tech uh, projects. So it's hard to imagine what kinds of other things are waiting for us. But these certainly um, are the, the most recognizable expenses now that we can foresee in the, uh, you know, in the near and, and, and mid to long term uh, future. So um, Chromebook fleet replacement, student data system replacement, network system wide uh, upgrade, uh, as far as the enterprise goes, it's hard to imagine we're, we're going to be facing anything of this scale mm -hmm. within the next three to five years. So thank you uh, again, Jonathan, for um, presenting it this evening. Okay. Thank you for adding that, uh, Mr. Binder. Um, okay, um, we have another public comment from Ani Silva. We do have curriculum needs coming forward that reflect the needs for online student usage. Okay, so that's just supporting that we'll need the books, the Chromebooks. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, I, I'm going to go ahead and bring it back to the board. And um, the what I want to ask, um, and we'll go down the line, is um, as far as options, I think we're all in favor of, of, of doing this. But I think as far as options to give... Um, Mr. Mejia, direction on that. I'm fine with either option, whatever the um, district feels is the best for us. So that's my um, input on that. Uh, per, option two is preferred by the district at this point. Um, so Christy, did you have any other comments on that? No, uh, I would vote after John 
Johnson's explanation for option two. And again, I want to reiterate how great it is that he went out and worked so, so diligently to get us the best price he could at this point with that, uh, with the skyrocketing skyrocket prices. So thank you for a good job, John. Okay. John Path, anything else? Yeah, so Debbie, I want to go back to your comments actually a little bit. Um, you, you are correct. You know, we're double allocating that E-rate as written on paper right now. We, we allocated on uh, the board meeting and uh, said very explicitly that uh, um, approximately $155,000 is currently available to offset costs in terms of reimbursement. Uh, you'll excuse me while I try and read my phone in front of my face because I have to get that close. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so I'm a little concerned about that. Song, you're saying that that is not the case. We, we, we absolutely are only allocating that money once right now. Right. What we did was, is if I recall, the whole network's about 734,000. So half of which we already have um, uh, from the allocation this current year, the tech team has set aside, plus taking 150,000 from the bounds. So we pay that, and then the rest will be financed, and we'll be paying two hundred thousand dollars per year, and without touching the e-rate. What we do is do a little bit like a, you know, for lack of a better term, shell game. So we get the reimbursement, the e-rate can be used to pay the network, which will free up Measure A for this. But bottom line, does not is not being used to pay for the seven hundred plus thousand dollars to the network. Yeah, so my problem is exactly what you said. It is sort of a shell game. And, you know, I know who loses in those. It's never the guy who's rotating with shells. So um, the, the, the fact is, actually, I'm, I'm a little concerned that somehow we've double allocated this. If we are voting for this, uh, option two makes more sense by, by a lot. So that, we, that answers your question. Okay, thank you. Um, Brian, anything else? Uh, just one thing, uh, Jonathan, you'd mentioned the next uh, big project was iPad replacement. What, uh, where on the timeline are you thinking that lands? It's definitely something that um, I think we're going to have to look into, not, not uh, June, July 2020 out allotment of Measure A, but um, something in, in the next round of Measure A after that. Okay, and and roughly how many iPads are we going to be looking to have to replace that round? I believe the the last number I got, I think it's it's uh, going to be somewhere about a hundred iPads. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, if Matthew, do you, if you have the accurate number on, on that one. I guess is good enough though. Too, I mean, it doesn't have to be. On the button. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, Brian, for asking about this. Um, we're currently gathering the numbers so that we can identify the exact need we need for the kinder uh, level to essentially build out to one to one, uh, one to one model for iPads as requested by the kindergarten teachers across the district. We um, are looking at right now a, a shortage of approximately 30 to 40 as we sit right now in terms of our preliminary numbers. Now this also accounts for what we know is available for students at home already based on a recent survey we sent out to the existing uh, kinder parents. Now that's a projection or, or we could use those, uh, those responses to somewhat predict what our general need will be next year for next year's kinder parents, more or less. But we are looking at, at zeroing that in uh, and being able to get uh, an accurate number. I think that we're going to actually be looking at um, 30 for this next round and then um, next year bringing in the remainder for uh, completing one-to-one -one, um, okay. if we don't cover it this time. Yeah. Great. All right. Thank you. And I did one other, other question for Song on this just as we look at uh, option one or option two. Is option two also your preferred option? Yes, um, it's it just to give us uh, uh, flexibility uh, because there are opportunities for us to pay down the payment because we also explore the option that they're not charging us um, the, the 
the dollar amount, the whole full amount up front, um, the $570,000, and that's not the case. Yeah. So let's say when we get 105, right, get, right off the bat, we reduce. So whatever the percentage rate will be based on the balance. So uh, it was a good question where the interest was so high. It was based on the full $570,000. Um, it, it, it looks like we may be getting the USAC funds in October, um, hopefully sooner, but at this point, we, we don't know for, for sure because it's, it's coming from the federal government, as you know, um, they have a little bit of a challenge right now in terms of funding. Um, so we'll, as soon as we get that, we'll reduce also. Okay. So this cost is not gonna be as high. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, that's all I've got. Okay, thanks, Brian. Uh, John Walton, any further comments, questions? Uh, no, I'm I'm comfortable with all the questions being answered. Um, as a preview to the future, I think you'll find me less supportive about iPads for staff or students. But um, when you're talking about Chromebooks, I'm very supportive of those, and uh, you know I'd be happy to support it and make a motion to approve the item with option two. Okay. Well, Debbie? I will second. Debbie. Yes, John. Can I ask uh, Matt uh, Binder a question, please? You absolutely can. Matt, so you're saying you need 30 or 40 and then potentially 30 or 40 more. So from that, I infer that we have at most about 80 iPads uh, in the district available. Is that right? We have about 120 kindergartners, maybe a few more, plus or minus. Yeah. Um, so currently, I think we have a two to one model in play at kinder first grade. Uh, levels and what we have some carts floating around as well. Now some of those carts have uh, prior versions of iPads, which are limited. As you know, the Apple model is is pretty strict with up updating and uh, you know retro supporting. So we've got I think it, it, right now and again the numbers are, are still coming in. The site techs are still getting the, the the basic numbers for us, but we should have at least a two to one in place at kinder level. So we're, what we're trying to do is bring that up to one-to-one -to -one, and um, that's gonna probably start with at least 30 this, this coming round, June, June uh, 2020. That's what we're anticipating. Okay, so let me, uh, let me back up on a couple things there. You started off saying two-to-one in kinder and first grade. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to Chromebooks for first grade then? Some of the uh, feedback from first grade has been more in favor of Chromebooks over iPads. And that's, again, a preliminary um, position, I think. We, we don't have anything set in stone from them. But uh, most of the passion around using iPads has come directly from the kindergarten teachers as opposed to the first grade teachers. Well, I, I, sort of that applies then, assuming kinder and first grade are roughly the same size that we are, if we were two to one in two grades, now we are one to one in one grade. Uh, yeah, except that half of the fleet uh, of iPads, I think are the older uh, iPad fours and they're no longer able to update uh, or support current apps. And um, you know, they have some inherent issues because they're now out of date. Okay, so it's beyond just we don't have enough, it's that we have the wrong ones. Yes, uh, well, yeah no longer okay. relevant right now, yeah. And is that, uh, is that true universally? Do we have other iPads throughout the, uh, the district that might be flowed down uh, and replaced by Chromebooks so that we are consistent across other aspects of the district? Yeah, I think we have some Chromebook use at the middle school and I'm not sure we have anything at the high school. Jonathan being from that site would know if there's any actual student level Chrome, um, iPad use at the at the high school. I don't think there are. Um, there? Yeah, there isn't any. So uh, anything at the middle school would likely fall into that outdated category as well. Um, and so the freshest ones we have are at the elementary. And so we're just basically trying to fill the gaps there uh, to honor the teacher's position at the kinder level. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Is that good, John? Yes. Okay. All right, so we had a motion to approve option two by John Walton and I second. If we could have a roll call vote, please. Oh, I'm sorry, before you do that, Mandy. Um, Adrian, I don't ever wanna forget you there. If you had any um, feedback on this. It's okay, uh, you guys went in depth and uh, no. 
uh, I don't have any feedback. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, roll call vote, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Johnson? Trustee Papp? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student Advisory? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Okay, we got, we got it. Okay, thank you, Pass 5-0. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Mejia, for that very uh, detailed presentation and all the work you put into that. Um, I also, uh, this is kind of out of order here, but I did want to acknowledge um, uh, Mr. Binder and his team for the update that he sent earlier. That should have been uh, reported out in our communication. Um, very detailed, all of the stuff that's going on. You guys are have your hands full and um, we appreciate this um, update and especially the website update. I checked it out. I really like it a lot. So everybody that's on, please go check out the new website that was designed by um, Mr. Bradley. So thank you for that. Okay, moving on, we um, will go to the transportation staffing for 2020-21. Um, and uh, Matt Kelly, um, uh, you've put together a very detailed, um, with a lot of data uh, report for us. But I'd like to ask you to give us a high level summary um, and plan that um, maybe the plans that are available and plans that you prefer. Um, okay, no problem. But I think uh, we've already prepared one, so Jonathan will put the video up. Oh, okay. Good evening, trustees. This is Matt Kelly, Director of Facilities and Transportation. This evening, I'll be doing a presentation on transportation staffing for the 2021 school year. Let's first look at ridership by year in the last 17 years of ridership. As you can see, ridership has gone up and down for the school district. But over the last five years, we have decreased from a high of 333 down to 186 riders. As we look at into the future for ridership, we can look at this graph to predict possibly what's gonna happen with ridership. The blue line shows the unemployment rate in the city of Pacific Grove. The red bars show bus ridership for the school district. When we enter the 0708 recession, we saw unemployment increase and with unemployment increasing, so did bus ridership. But bus ridership didn't peak this time until a year or two after unemployment peaked. Unemployment continued to decrease and so did bus ridership in the later years of this graph. So what we can determine from this is that as unemployment increases again, times, we could see an increase in bus ridership in the coming years. Our current staff right now, um, as we enter the school year, we had a foreman plus plus four other drivers, so a total of five drivers. We, we lost two drivers in retirement, the foreman and another driver. So let's look at the analysis on how we determine what our staffing should be going forward. Uh, first, some facts. Um, we average about 31,000 miles a year. Um, our fuel costs are approximately $22,000 a year, which factors to a 71 cent per mile fuel factor. Our repair costs over the last few years are about 49,500, which we can determine a fuel factor of $1.57 per mile. We average about 120 miles a day for home to school and sped routes, which is about 21,600 miles a year. Our home to school and sped fuel costs are $15,000 per year. And the district cost, the average cost for an employee per hour is about $47.02. <clears throat> we built a couple of models and the first model we built was um, as we entered the school year this year in August, 2019, 2020, we had five drivers, a foreman plus four other drivers at a cost of $297,000. Our routes that we are running are special ed and our home to school routes that we are running at that time we're gonna cost about 
per year using the factors that we saw on the last slide. Total cost is $346,000 per year. Then we looked at um, another model, the next model, which is the March 2019-20, after we lost uh, the drivers to the two retirements. We then had three drivers, which we saw a significant decrease in labor. But we were able to still cover, though not very well, we were able to cover the same routes at a cost of $49,000 per year, for a total of $193,000 um, per year. And this was a cost savings of $152,000 per year. But I will warn that this, this model did not work for the school district, for staff, for students, and for parents. We weren't able to support staff in the field trips that they wanted to take. We weren't able to support students and parents to keep our routes consistent. When we lost a driver to sickness um, or vacation, we had to significantly change our bus routes um, because two drivers could not cover the above uh, stops and above routes. Next, before we went into the, these economic un, uh, times, we looked at a driver trainer and what it, the, or the benefits it would have to have a driver trainer. Driver trainer would cost the district $118,000 per year, but we wouldn't hire one of the drivers that retired and then we would, the department would still have three, would keep the other three drivers for a total of four drivers in the department. We'd still be able to cover all the routes that we do cover now, and we still have a backup. If someone went out, we would still, we'd have someone there to cover routes, so we wouldn't have to cover routes. It would cost about $316,000 per year. This is a $3 million from the August 2019 table, but an increase to the, um, to the current staffing that we have of $122,000. This is the last model we created titled two drivers plus admin assistant and this model and this is the model we'll be recommending to the board this evening for approval and this model we are we will not be rehiring the transportation foreman nor the other six hour position instead we'll be hire we're asking to hire an admin assistant a 0.5 FTE admin assistant to take over some of the roles that the foreman was doing um, administrative or desk roles that, that the foreman was doing, like POs and billing and um, and dispatching. We would then only have one home to school driver and one special ed driver, drastically uh, cutting stops that we can get to in our home to school routes. We would keep a utility person in going between maintenance and transportation and this person would be the backup if there's any illnesses um, and we wouldn't have to change our routes significantly like we do in the March 2019-20 model. This person would also act as a extra driver for field trips and athletic trips and make it possible to cover a lot of the trips we weren't able to cover in the March in the March model. As you can see here our our routes significantly decrease um, and the cost decreased with that. Our total cost is $238,000 per year. And that comes at a cost savings from the August 2019-20 model when we enter the year of $108,000, but a cost increase to the March model of $44,000. We are gonna see quite a bit of uh, route changes. The route, the stops here in yellow are the ones we still will serve. The ones in red, we will not serve anymore. We came to this. We came to this. Uh, these stops by breaking the city up into four quadrants: Beach Tract, uh, uh, Delmar area, Pebble Beach area, and Del Monte Park area. We were able to pick at least two stops in each one of those areas, and we focused on um, students of need, where students of need are most in those areas. That oh, those are the stops that we're hitting. Again, Pebble Beach and Del Monte Park will be cut quite a bit. The ones in yellow are the, are the stops that we'll be going to, and the ones in red are the ones that we're going to be eliminating. Our recommendations moving forward, we're recommending to go with two drivers plus the admin, administrative assistant model, increase the hourly rate for field trips and athletics to $47, increase the overtime rate to $70.50. Now a couple pros and cons to this. Um, pros, is that there's no effect on athletics since the athletic 
transportation budget comes out of the general fund already. It would help with tracking actual costs though. Um, charging more for field trips though would bring in more revenue, which would make each field trip uh, cost neutral to the general fund. Currently, the district is covering the gap between the charge rates and the actual rates. Now, there are cons to doing this, and that, mean, that may mean possibly fewer field trips for students, or if the teachers chose to go on those extra field trips, it may mean they don't have funds available to purchase materials for classrooms. We're heading into uncertain times, and we don't know what social distancing is going to look like on buses, uh, nor do we know what the effect is going to be on our home to school and our sped routes. Um, we do know that there's going to be protocols by the state and by county leaders, but we don't know what the effect is going to have on the transportation department. We don't know if we're going to have to hire possibly more people to, to meet these protocols or have to stagger start times to schools to meet them. Thank you for listening tonight, and now I will take any questions. Well, that was cool. <laughs> Thank you for that, uh, Matt. Um, okay. Well, um, I'm going to go ahead and come to the board um, for questions. Christy? Okay, we'll move on to John Path and go back to Christy. John Path, any questions? Well, uh, you know, I, I kind of feel like we're approaching this from a cost point of view and not why do we have bus service at all point of view. And uh, there's multiple reasons to maintain kind of what we do. Um, and uh, I'm reluctant to, to say, well, let's, let's go ahead and reduce and get rid of, you know, almost uh, half our stops if I counted it correctly, possibly even more in some, well, definitely more in some areas. Um, when, you know, the purpose is to ensure school accessibility, essentially, across the board. Um, are, we, are we putting together a, a false savings here? Yes, it may save us a little money, but in the end, is it is it against the student purpose? Okay, is is that a question or a comment or? It's a comment. I mean, it's a, it's oh. maybe it's rhetorical, but uh -huh. uh, I, I I don't see that. Um, yes, it costs money. It costs money in the same way that a, a dozen other things cost money, um, and this is a large sum. Um, you know, in the grand scheme, uh, I think that we have tried to utilize and there's no possible way of, of having people pay for it. Um, but the goal has always been, how do we get the most students to school in the safest manner? How do we make sure that they're actually going to get there? And certainly bus is safer and, and better. Uh, it's less pollution than multiple cars. Um, it turns out buses are inherently safer than cars. So. Okay. It's a comment. All right. Uh, thank you, John. Um, okay, I saw Christy pop up, so we'll go back to Christy for any comments. Um, you know, my only pop up, I, I've only been on the board for a few years, and I know that it, when buses come up, there's all these just different discussions. I just, I think we are um, perhaps overly uh, generous with our, our fees. And I think what, uh, John is saying regarding the the good aspects of buses uh, is definitely important, but we are far behind our um, other districts that are close by as far as charging. So if it is something uh, we look at, I think we look at that side too. Just in the same way we had to last year with food, you have to kind of offset this stuff at times. And I think this is a good time to take a look at that. I also think that um, we're so fortunate in this district that if people are commuting, the commute is usually relatively short anyway compared to, um, say, Car Carmel with Captain Cooper, where students are literally bused, you know, 45 minutes or an hour to get to their site. So I, I just would like to look at pricing. I'd like that to be part of this conversation as well. Thank you. Okay. Brian? Um, a couple things. One, with the elimination of these stops, I mean, there, was, there wasn't a map for us to look at. So are we, does that mean people that are going to be using the buses just have to 
walk further to pick it up? Is that what we're talking about? Or, or am I imagine, or is it something different? Well, Matt's getting on the phone. Uh, many of those stops, um, students would need to walk over to the next stop down um, okay. in some of those cases. Okay. I, yeah, exactly, Brian. Um, like I said, we, we broke the city up into four different areas and we picked um, at least two stops in each one of those areas. And then we, um, and then we looked at where do we have the most amount of students or which stops do we have the most amount of students which stops do we have more uh, the most amount of free and reduced kids? And we focused and targeted those stops. Uh, we a lot of those stops you see on there. We don't even have students on there um, when we're running full force. So it wasn't that big a deal to eliminate them. Okay, great. So in the in the goal in that then is is to create some uh, greater efficiencies in just how the stops are managed and to be able to handle it with with your drivers. Is that correct? Correct, yes. Okay, great, great. Um, and I can't remember my second question, so uh, okay. we'll come I'll, back I'll if see you if I can. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a minute here, but go okay. on, please. Okay. Um, John Walton, questions, comments? Um, yeah, um, probably more comments than um, questions, but a few questions. One, just an observation. I mean, I, I, I guess I appreciate, you know, the, the value buses add, but our district is so small, uh, very small. I guess I would argue the word commute in our district, um, maybe not applicable. Um, the, the subsidy, if I do the numbers right, that, you know, we're subsidizing per student per year for riding the buses over $1,000 per year. So on one hand, we, we agonize about how can we pay for a Chromebook that's 200 books that the kids need for their education. Um, at the same time, we're subsidizing, you know, the, the, the ridership program for something that's not required, which is a, a nice to have, a very nice to have. I mean, it's, it's great when we can, we can afford to provide the luxury to family, to school, but it's not required like a lot of things we do. And then I think, you know, in the memo, it points out that the fees we even charge now are much less than the districts around us, um, which to Christy's point, we could, instead of charging more for things like field trips and stuff like that, we could simply raise the uh, fees we charge to be equitable with what other districts charge us. So I, you know, I'm not, I'm not opposed to buses philosophically. I just, I feel like we have so many other priorities in the district that are higher priority, whether it's food or books or, or, you know, salaries for our staff. I think we need to find a good balance. And I know it's not a lot of money, but I think, you know, it's our, it's our duty to find a balance of um, you know, providing services. And I don't think, uh, I don't think this eliminates the bus program. I think it sounds like Director Kelly put a lot of work into thinking of the different models and the one that is a balance between providing bus service, um, fewer stops, but bus service, and trying to come up with a plan that you know addresses the fact that we can't hire drivers really. So the old model really isn't applicable anymore anyhow. Um, I'm tempted to, to propose raising the fees, but he didn't propose that, so I guess we can save that till next year when we see what happens. Uh, you know, I, I I appreciate the 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 comment about maybe bus ridership uh, will increase depending on the economy. Um, back to uh, Trustee Path's point about safety, um, you know, we, we could make things safer and improve, uh, increase bus ridership if we just ban kids driving to school too. But I don't think we're gonna do that tonight. So um, I think there's a lot of ways to approach this. Um, I think the fact that this addresses the, the driver problem we've been having, uh, I think a lot of different aspects and it saves our district a little bit of money when we're when we're trying to find funds to cover other expenses that are maybe more important. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm supportive of this. Okay. All right. Thank you, John. Um, before I make my comment, Brian, did you remember your second question? Uh, no, but I came up with a different one. Okay. Um, or a different... Uh, <laughs> 
I just wanted to add one other thought too. It's like, um, I, I'm really uh, appreciative of us having this in the district. I know we're a small district, um, but you know, I think back to, and I don't think my personal situation is probably all that uncommon when my youngest daughter and we live, you know, just up on Erdley behind Trader Joe's. And I think it like, you know, in first grade, she was already asking me to let her walk to, to school. And I was like, not in your life. I'm not going to have you walking uh, down Ransford. Uh, it just, the, the, I wish, I guess what I'm trying to say is I think it's safer for some of these kids uh, than walking to, to be on a bus too. Um, and that I've, if I've you know, thought we had maybe a little bit more walkable scenario around some of our schools, I might feel a little differently about it, but um, I'm glad that we have it and that I think it's a, a safe option for some families too. And, the, and I, I would imagine a lot of the families that are using it are because they absolutely have to use it. And I do think we'll see more of those uh, over the next few years as we get through whatever we're going to have to get through. So mm -hmm. that's all. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Um, for me, uh, I, I'm along the lines with John Walton. Um, I am not in favor of ever, um, you know, not having buses at all. But um, Matt Kelly, you've put so much work into this and so much detail. I think um, I support the um, decision uh, of your option um, until I heard that the teachers will have to pay for supplies. <laughs> so um, are, are we talking like, um, do you have, like have an estimate of how much they would be losing because they're paying? I mean, I know you gave the, the um, field trip prices here, but I, I, you know, I hate to take away more and more from the teachers if, if we don't have to. Can I just ask a clarification question on that, Debbie? The last time we talked sure. about this, what I thought I remembered hearing was that field trips actually paid for by site funds to each school, not the teachers themselves. They are not paid for by teachers themselves, generally, John. They could, they could come out of either site funds or um, I think uh, it, it was either Walk With Pride Fund or PG Pride Funds, I, but I, one of them you can't use. And I think it's the PG Pride, you can use Walk With Pride Fund. And then um, I think at some sites, teachers also get um, an allotment of money um, from um, the site itself, and they can use those as well, and PTA. So yeah, yeah. That, th those those are the funds that get, if you're gonna use those for transportation, then then a lot of teachers I know, I know use those for supplies, and they wouldn't have as much to use. Yeah, and that's really what I was referring to. Um, Sean Roach um, confirmed site funds or grants, just for the record. Right. Um, yeah, I was more thinking of the site funds that if they're using site funds for their field trips and they're going to have to take a little bit more out, um, you know, um, I don't know. I'm going to open up for public comment and see if there's any teachers that want to um, chime in on that. Um, but I really do appreciate all this detail that you put in, especially the unemployment rates and how it affects the, um, the bus ridership. Um, and this has always been a, a subject that we just love to talk about. Um, so, um, yeah, I Respectfully, support... Debbie. What's that? Correlation is not causation. I mean, is that, that wouldn't be true just for PGUSD. Is that true across the board? Is that true through the state of California? What's true? Unemployment versus bus ridership. Oh, I'm just in we, the report that um, Matt provided. He he provided the Pacific Grove unemployment rates. Uh, yes, but is is that is that is there any real correlation, or are those just two friendly graphs that happen to match? If it's true across the state, then it's probably real. If it's well, only true for that. PG, I don't have that data, I either, but so. I have I have the data that he provided, which just shows, you know, <laughs> it could increase. Yeah. Based on unemployment rate. Um, well, you know, we are in line to have debate, so I want to continue talking here. Um, you know, we say we, we don't charge enough money. In fact, on a, on a more rational scale, which is not a uniform fee, we, we are probably charging, I mean, we are definitely charging more than if you have to go out to Tuller Cetus per mile, per day. 
than a, even a $200 Carmel fund. So the question is, what's your metric? You know, just saying, hey, we got to do that. Carmel's budget uh, is, um, they have a potential for a massive hit actually coming up this year with their two years when they go to a, a different schedule. Um, their bus schedule will essentially double and it's going to be in the, in the millions when it goes up. Um, because they have a significantly different area upon which they draw. So is $100 right? I don't know. But just saying, well, we're not the same as Carmel, that's not, that's not even a, a rational metric to look at. It just isn't. Um, the other thing is, is really, you know, we're not talking about what's the purpose of the bus service to begin with. Is the purpose to support children who want to come and get ed education? Or are we talking about it just simply as it's a cost to the district? Because it's not. To me, it is a way of ensuring ensuring that children get into the seats when possible. Now, what, what happens in the fall, I have no idea. But, you know, that's in a normal conversation, the saying, hey, well, we're going to save $200,000 or $130,000. Yeah, it's a subsidy. It's always been a subsidy. You know, there's a lot of things we subsidize that way. So, John, are you in favor of keeping it the way it is current on I, the I um, would... option that Matt provided? Yes. Okay. okay. And let, can I add, let me add one more. Let me add one more thing with the uh, field trips and especially the field trips is um, there. There's a crossover between when um, when we come out of uh, doing home to school, where we still have drivers that are being um, that are on on the time clock, and we do not charge teachers for that hourly rate um, when when they're when those drivers are working. So. Um, this is only the hourly rate after they come off a shift in, in between, you know, I think 10 and noon, I think it is, ten, maybe 10 and 1. Um, so I just, I, did, I never, I didn't clarify that in the presentation. Okay, thank you. Okay, I, I'm going to bring it back to the board, um, but I am going to public comment first. So I'm going to open it up for public comment. There um, are quite a few comments, so just bear with me while I read all these public comments. And um, anybody else wants to add, please do so by putting PC before your comment. So I'll just start at the top, and then Matt, I'll go to you to uh, respond if necessary, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, this is from Carolyn Swanson. I stand by my request from several months ago when this topic came up. We must reach out to parents for feedback on this topic. We have 186 kids riding the buses, which is roughly 10% of our students. We also have to remember that the Federal IDEA, IDEA Act, which grants uh, children who qualify for special education, recognizes transportation services as an improved related service. No matter what, you will need to have district provided transportation as an option for kids who qualify for special education. Um, Sean, Matt, do you want me to stop by each comment or do you want me to keep going? Uh, you can keep going. Okay. Uh, Sean Roach was just confirming the funds, our site funds or grants. Um, Shannon McCarty, we don't get an allotment for field trips. Carrie Serpa, we have to raise money for bus fees when we go on field trips, PG walk money or get grants. Sean Keller, our Robert H. Down will support teachers if transportation moves in this direction, if field trips will be occurring in our future. Good point. Um, Matt Bell, PG High School can allocate funding towards trips. Buck Rogerman, Forest Grove will cover field trips out of the site fund when necessary, although, allot although allotment per teacher is given, we have always found a way to fund field trips. Corinne Gordon, field trips uh, have to come from ASB fund or fundraising, never from general funds for me at the high school. But, uh, Hedel Patel, I'm sorry if I say your name wrong. Hedel Patel, uh, as, a as a Forest Grove teacher, I do not use site funds. Sometimes I ask parents for money or pay out of my, po my own pocket. Uh, Chavez, that's Erica Chavez, I believe, if field trips will be occurring in upcoming year. Karen Gordon, exactly as parents, um, ask parents for money to help pay. 
but Rogerman site funds are always available for our teachers. They should never, in all uppercase, pay out of pocket for field trips. Beth Cena, yes, I agree, Hatel, usually pay out of pocket for ask, or ask parents if it is it is difficult process. It is a difficult process. Craig Gordon, field trips versus daily bus ridership are apples and oranges. Shannon McCarty, we have never used site funds for field trips. Buck Rogerman, I have personally approved the use of site funds for field trips <laughs> when necessary. Uh, Erica Chavez, wasn't me. Okay, we'll, we'll end the public comments there. <laughs> okay, going back up to uh, Carolyn Swanson, if, um, I know that we would never um, not provide transportation for um, special education. I know that for sure. But um, Matt Kelly, if you wouldn't mind um, if there's any further response to that. No, we, we never would. And in fact, I think we've had this discussion before where we've talked about um, there possibly being um, the need to have to hire another um, special ed driver down the road because um, we got we do have quite a few special ed um, students right now. I think we're at somewhere around between 12 and 15 between all the sites. Okay. How about the uh, reaching out to parents piece? I know we've done that before um, in years past. Um, so. I, I, yeah, we can, I mean, we can put together a survey and send it out um, and get feedback from parents. Okay. Um, uh, there's another uh, public comment from Kay Gordano. I have paid for field trips using walk money, just to add that. Okay, I think um, the rest of the comments are uh, self-explanatory, um, that we can pay out of site funds and a little bit of communication at each site might help as well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back to the board um, for a motion or any other comments, questions. Okay, I'm going to make a motion to approve the transportation staffing for 2021, 20 and 21, based on the recommendation from um, staff as presented, which is the two drivers plus admin assistant choice. I will second that. And uh, I wanted to also just add quickly thanks to Matt for putting this together in such great detail. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, this has been a motion made by Debbie Crandall, second by Brian Swanson. Roll call, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? She's right here. Trustee Dawson? Uh, aye. Yeah, I was muted, sorry, aye. Okay. <laughs> Trustee Paff? No. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student Advisory? Aye. Adrian, I forgot to ask you if you had any feedback. Uh, no, it's all good. Okay, sorry. Okay, Thank you. Um, sure. Passes four to one. Um, thank you, Matt. Um, thank and you. And of course, if things need to change as, as you go, you'll bring it back. I will. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next item is um, board calendar future meetings. Um, are there any changes to this, Dr. Porras? Uh, actually, yes. Uh, at the request of the board, um, we removed and we did our best to adjust. Yeah, I, I'm at outstanding presentation. <laughs> okay, thanks, Christy. <laughs> But is that for the board calendar or for I guess the so. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Uh, I, I, we, um, we, we, the, at the request of the board, we struck out as many items as we um, felt we could based on the current situation, um, moved them where we where we, we applicable. So there are changes. Uh, they are noticed in strikes and um, it needs to have action this evening. Uh, can I mention that I think we have a, another item to jump off, hold something off consent? Yeah, that will yeah, be yeah, next. Yeah. That's next, yes. Okay. Yeah, that was to uh, brought to the end. Uh, Thank you for that, though. 
I'm sorry. Um, so is there any uh, discussion or questions regarding the changes, um, Christy? No, not at this time. Thank you. John? Pat? No. Nope. No, thank you. Brian? Nope. No, thank you. John Walton on the calendar. Uh, I, I just want to ask uh, Supervisor Porras. I, I think, you know, we had talked about the previous meetings when we were going to are we gonna have a special meeting or will it be at a regular meeting to talk about the, Hey the John, plan? you're John, you're cutting in and out. Sorry. Um I just wanted to ask uh Superintendent Forrest when we're gonna which meeting we're gonna use to talk about next year and the plans for next year and that. Are we do we need a special meeting for that? Uh well that would be a future agenda item. Um but um but uh, we have not yet discussed adding a second meeting to the calendar. Um, but uh, we're going to bring that up during future agenda. Okay. okay. Good. Any public comment on this uh, board calendar items? Okay. Seeing none, bring it back to the board for a motion, please. Make a motion. I move. Go ahead. The board meeting calendar as revised. Seconded. Okay. So we have a motion made by John Taff, seconded by Christy Dawson. Roll call, please. Christy Crandall. Aye. Christy Dawson. Aye. Trustee Paff. Aye. Aye. I did you say me? I Swanson says I. <laughs> Walton. I. Student advisory. I. Okay, thank you. Passes five zero. Now we are going to action item G, which was added, um, pulled from the consent item F, and this is for the high school. I'm digging for it here, but I, as I do that, I will. Uh, refer to John Paff since you asked for this. Do you have questions regarding this for uh, Mr. Bell? Well, the uh, the item as listed in consent F has uh, an error in it, which uh, since this is a public document should be at least noted in public before we agree to it. Um, which is? Which is? Uh, well, it's not clear actually if we're saying PG site admin account two thousand eight hundred and thirteen plus six thousand dollars, which doesn't include the amount we actually have to pay. Matt, you want to just walk through that very quickly? Yes, uh, I would. Um, I apologize for uh, the the confusion there. There's only one part of the project that we are currently going forward with. Uh, there's actually three phases, but the first phase is re-establishing the infrastructure, having uh, new amps and uh, sequencers, wiring, et cetera, et cetera. Um, IAMP is proposing to do that for 9,886.49. That's paid for through a grant from PG Pride, which is $6,000, and then 3,886.49 cents from site funds. Um, the part that became confusing was uh, I inadvertently put in phase two, uh, which was to uh, replace the existing wireless microphones and that sort of thing. That is not part of this project. Uh, we're seeking different funding for that. So currently, the only thing that will be done uh, will be phase one, um, and that is paid for with site funds and PG Pride funds. Thank you, man. Any other questions on that, John, or you just wanted clarification in public I, for that? I wanted to make sure we were clear in public. Normally in a board meeting, if there was something that was uh, had a leftover line, for whatever reason, we would simply hand out a new copy and then it would be clear. It's much harder to do that digitally. Okay, thanks for bringing that back. Um, okay, um, I'm gonna see if any other board members, um, for the record, have any other questions, comments, Christy? No, not at this time. Thank you. Brian. Uh, just one thing, because, yeah, I know that we had gotten a clarification on that item um, by way of email, and I want to thank John Path for 
for pulling it actually because it did deserve some greater attention but i'm wondering in for the record how would how are we going to note that the the clarification on that how does that happen just this video the, thing or or the, mo the motion will uh include that right yeah we, we can also we'll also make sure that the corrected update will be put into the uh into the package okay great thank you that's all okay john walton anything further uh i did have a clarification question i've always been confused and maybe like the whole conversation around <laughs> how do field trips get paid for um i wasn't aware that uh principals or director kelly maybe could apply for pg grant funds to do facility improvements is that allowable i always thought pg pride money was like for educational stuff i i can answer that um this clearly is for educational pieces. It, it's, it's part of our, our larger curriculum with the sports primarily, but we also use it for graduation, any other events that we have down at the stadium. Um, currently, without uh, any sound system at all, uh, our graduation gets difficult at best, although uh, this is probably not the best year to, to talk about sound for graduation. Um, and the PE classes, also use the, the sound system. Um, and so I don't think PG Pride differentiates who is requesting, they differentiate how many students it will affect. So teachers typically apply, but in this case, there wasn't a single teacher that, um, I don't know how to explain that piece. Anyway, I was the point person on, on creating this and, and applying to PG Pride. No, that's, that's good to know. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Um, thank you. Any public comment on this item? Open it up for, for a few seconds. If there's any public comment, please put PC for your comment. Okay. Seeing none right away. I'll bring it back to the board uh, for motion, please. Make a motion to accept the item uh, as clarified. Okay, I'll second. Um, and the, so we have a motion made by John Paff, seconded by Debbie Crandall. Um, roll call, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Paff? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Student advisory? Aye. Okay, pass 5-0. Um, we're moving on now to information discussion. Um, and we'll get uh, our district update on response to COVID-19 from Dr. Porras. You may take the floor. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Um, just um, try to make this relatively brief. Um, we uh, continue to do our, our uh, daily updates twice a day, as well as the site updates, and um, trying to get as much information out as we can. Um, and again, thank you to the community for offering feedback and questions as we go. So it's been helpful for us to, up, to uh, update those as we need to. Um, we have a, a couple of, of uh, we're coming around the corner now in terms of um, sort of where the rubber meets the road, as it were. Um, as we're looking towards the close of the school year and then a, a summer and then what's going to happen in the fall, uh, there are a lot more unknowns than there are even remote ideas of what we're going to be doing uh, coming from the state. Um, we do know that we are getting our direction from the governor who um, lays out the path and then there are some options that are available to the county health director who makes the decisions around the shelter in place uh, and social distancing rules and so on and so forth. And um, to that end, you all see pretty much those updates as we all do. Um, shelter in place regulations for the most part are still in place. There's been some relaxing of those measures for some of our local businesses. Um, there really has not been a major effect um, for the schools uh, in that um, we're still closed for students at the buildings uh, through the rest of the school year. And um, so to that end, um, it's, we're gonna finish off our, with the social distancing that we have in place, as well as the um, distance learning. As for next year, uh, 
truly, we, we still have very little, if any, direction in terms of what's going to happen. And um, the 24 superintendents, we still meet twice a week. Um, and we are all asking the questions that need to be asked, um, namely, how many students are going to be allowed in a classroom? Uh, the best guess we can get is about 12 to 14 students per classroom if we were to follow the current um, rules around social distancing. Um, that alone will then drive us in terms of how many days of school per cohort. If we go that way, are there going to be alternate days? Are we going to go to some days at site, some days at social distancing, or excuse me, distance learning? Um, a lot of it is driven by how many students we're going to have in a classroom. The other question that comes, how many adults and students will be allowed in the building? Um, it could be that we aren't even allowed to fully staff a building at this point, uh, which will change matters um, pretty severely. So um, until we have that, that particular answer, or at least those couple answers, we really are going to be shooting a bit in the dark. Uh, we have a 32-page document that was given to us by the County Office of Education. Uh, it's the best um, distillation that we could get from the County Health Department in terms of sort of what are the overarching expectations um, for the county in regards to uh, maintaining the regulations in school and how will that help us decide how we open up school in the fall. Um, it is, it is a tremendously difficult read in terms of just trying to get through it. Um, and um, we're trying to figure out what are the most important aspects of it. Um, and we're slowly but surely getting to some of it. We, um, all of the districts in the county are looking at a, a couple of different models, predominantly. Um, one being a hybrid model um, where there is um, some days students attend school and some days they will be at home. That presents a lot of difficulty for uh, especially our elementary parents who um, brings up the issue of childcare and who's gonna take care of the child when they're at home and not at school. Uh, Maybe a little bit different for secondary, so there might be different models at the different grade levels. Um, uh, we'd, we'd have to figure out um, how many physical spaces we have to house our students in our buildings to determine um, what that hybrid model will look like. So again, it's a little bit of a delay. Um, we have um, been working very hard on the, uh, diligently I would say, on the how distance learning will take place for the district. We do understand that the expectation from the state will be that all of the standards must be addressed. Um, the instructional minutes will still be required. Attendance um, will still be um, compulsory. And um, so there's no relaxing on any of that at this point. So we still need to deliver education to the level that's expected by the state, which means that we still have to assess and grade students, um, which will look different than what we are currently doing now. Um, to that end, we need some kind of a platform. The platform, it looks like that we are, um, uh, all of the staff at this point are, are aiming at is the uh, Google platform, which has been working for us well. Uh, I think we're gonna continue to work, use that as a platform to base our distance learning on. Um, and, um, the uh, uh, Director Silva, um, Director Binder, and uh, Mr. McKee have been working very hard in regards to um, what some of that is gonna look like, has been working directly with all the principals, and the principals have been having conversations with staff at grade level meetings and otherwise. We certainly do not have all of the answers. Yes, we need to have lots more conversations, but it looks like at the very least, um, the distance learning will have that platform. Um, if you go to, uh, there's also a um, instructional resource page on the website that's uh, built for our staff to help them use some of the distance learning. There will be a need for professional development. We know that um, in terms of um, whatever, whatever uh, online program we end up leaning on heavily because all of us are gonna need help with that as well as parents um, and students at home. So um, that's a big question mark, but we're working pretty hard at it. Uh, the uh, technology has been distributed to the extent that we can. We continue to survey in terms of uh, needs at home uh, for Wi-Fi hotspots, for computers, those kinds of things. And I think that um, uh, we keep checking on that pretty regularly. And I, uh, again, just looking what's happening at most of the other districts in Monterey County, much less the state, um, I cannot thank the voters enough for passing a measure A. We would be in a whole different ball game if, if that was not the case. So. Um, all of that is to say, um, uh, there has been a request for a special meeting in mid-May sometime. 
to talk about what the opening of school will look like. Um, I can tell you now that we're not going to have a very good picture of that in mid-May because we just don't have the guidelines from the state yet in terms of what the expectations are for schools. We can, we can certainly lay out a few options that we're looking at, um, but I don't think we're going to have very many different features. Nobody likes that response. I don't either, um, but it's the only response that we can give at this moment. Um, and uh, we're still looking for more answers. Our county superintendent has been working very diligently with the governor and with the um, other county superintendents in the state. Uh, the other piece that I would add to that, um, that part of it, uh, we, we have inst are starting to uh, create advisory groups or advisory task force at the sites that include parents um, and teachers and uh, classified staff members, administrators, to start taking a look at what some of this opening might look like, what are some of the models, what are some good ideas that we have out there. The teachers um, are really doing a, a wonderful job of, of coming up with some, some models that we might be able to follow. Uh, that's, this is just the beginning of that advisory model and thank, I think Robert Down has kind of paved the way initially for that. And uh, we'll continue to framework that out, get the word out to parents and try to invite people into the conversation. Um, we can take as many ideas as we can, but again, we're gonna be limited by what we can or allowed to do by the state. Um, we also, um, I think have done, um, as, as um, it came up in a conversation earlier, I can't remember the conversation, it might've been in the interviews actually, but um, I think I'm very satisfied with the progress that we're doing because we're doing the very best we can with the, with the situation we have at hand, especially for our seniors. I know that there's a lot of questions for our senior students at the, at the high school. Um, all of us are really trying to figure this one out. Um, the, all of the superintendents of the secondary districts in the county have now started um, to realize that the August, uh, waiting for August for a graduation ceremony is probably not the best idea because it is highly likely that we will not be allowed to put a big social gathering together that would look like what a regular graduation looks like. Um, it may be a bit pessimistic, but it, it just does not look like it's fanning out, especially in getting the word from the uh, health director. Um, however, Dr. Moreno from the County Health did um, bend for the schools and is willing to look at um, some alternative uh, options that he was not willing to look at before. So kudos to him in regards to some kind of a ceremony that um, looks like either a drive-in or drive-through model. And so all the districts are modeling these out right now. In some cases, it literally is a drive. It's like a jack-in-the-box drive-through sort of. You go, you drive through and you pick up your stuff and you move on. Um, and then there's others that look like what we are working on. And we sent a letter to the senior parents earlier this evening. Um, think of the old drive-in theaters of old. Um, we need a large enough parking lot. So we're gonna try to work with one of our local community colleges and university to find a big enough space where we can allow uh, the parent or guardian to drive their student into the parking lot, um, fill your car with family members. Um, we would set up a scenario where they would all drive in facing a large screen that we would bring in. Um, we would try to do some kind of simulcast via the radio, and we would have some pre-arranged presentations on video, maybe even getting some in-person uh, speakers, valedictorian, salutatorian perhaps, um, to speak live. Um, again, all of these social distancing parameters in place, uh, and then do a sort of a drive out um, ceremony of some sort. And we would also try to uh, deliver the, um, the diploma booklets, the folder, to all of the vehicles as well in some fashion. It's going to take everyone's work on this. The PG Police Department has been just uh, extraordinary in their support of trying to make this work for our seniors. Um, and so they're um, helping us trying to plan this out. So cross your fingers, everyone. What we need are support from our local community colleges, uh, from our health, county health director, and our uh, final say on our, um, our police department. But if we can make that work at the end of May, I think that would be just a, something special, as best as we can do uh, to honor our seniors, uh, along with, I know the photos that have been, um, they're gonna be out and available for the senior parents, and then any other activity that we can put into play. So um, just a lot of moving parts there, but I, I just want to, I can't emphasize enough, we, we really want to do something for our seniors to make this happen. Principal Bell and Assistant Principal Steinbeck and, and uh, Dr. Hagquist and a number of other folks have just been, we're, we're working on it. So 
uh, those are the plants that we have in place right now. <laughs> and uh, I know I'm, I'm rattling on, but there's a lot rattling in my head right now. So um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer those. And um, we'll keep getting information out to you. Great. So you haven't been busy at all. Oh, got a great team. <laughs> great team I'm kidding, kidding. Yeah. Of course. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so much going on. Um, I know that you guys are doing the best you possibly can with what you've been given so far to make everything work and what's going to happen next year. The graduation thing, as I um, uh, shared with you via email today, please um, let me know what I can do to help. I really want to help make this happen. And I think that dry I love the drive in idea. Um, I was thinking the fairgrounds, but maybe that's not big enough. I don't know. Well, the fairgrounds are in use right now for uh, temporary homeless housing. Oh, the bayonet. Yeah, it's been set up that way. Now, whether or not there's anybody there, I don't know. Oh, okay. There's a question out of, uh, well, anyway, yes, that's a true statement. Okay. Well, anyway, um, thank you, um, Dr. Porras, for that update. Um, and for all the daily updates that you guys are sending as well. Um, to uh, stay on track, I'm going to come to the board for any comments, questions first, and then we have some public comment that I will read. Um, Christy, do you have any comments, questions regarding this? We'll come back to Christy. Um, I think you're muted, Christy. Um, John Paff, any comments, questions? Yeah, so I heard a couple things here. One is uh, you're trying to settle on Google Classroom. Is that across the board or is that middle school, high school, and then uh, possibly a different platform for elementary? I think we're gonna try for the majority of the district to where it can work. Um, the elementary might be a little bit more difficult than the younger grades, um, but um, I think um, we're aiming for the, the broadest scope possible. And, and perhaps um, I think um, Director Binder can chime in if, if, um, if he's oh. unmuted. <clears throat> yeah okay um sorry go ahead matt oh yeah no um i think that's the the plan as we we see it right now um we've got a lot of obviously more teachers now than ever even at the elementary level using it and using it with a fair degree of comfort and um, confidence and i think that can only get better over time i know there's some concern in the the actual lowest grades primary level um, we're confident we can um, support the, their use of whatever um, programs that they're currently using along with uh, maybe integrating it with Google Classroom in some kind of way that helps them achieve their goals. It, it is being used even in the primary level in, in, in other school districts. We know that. Okay. My impression, um, thank you for that. And uh, I guess I wouldn't hesitate to say uh, two different models if uh, that is a better system as long as we're only two. Um, certainly the high school's requirements are different than uh, first grade. Sure. Um, similarly, um, you know, the problem of a hybrid model in, um, well, there's lots of problems with a hybrid model, um, but it's easier at the high school, theoretically, right? Your students are, are a little bit more um, self-aware and uh, potentially willing to work on their own. Of course, those who don't just don't at all right now. But, um, I'm sure we have a few in both directions. Um, at the elementary though, it, it seems to me um, this gets a lot tougher. Um, it's not easy anywhere, but um, you know, we're gonna have a, an issue there. So finding out that physical space requirement and what that's really going to do, particularly if we say uh, there's no relaxation of instructional minutes. I've heard nothing said so far of, of any of the adjuncts, PE, uh, music, uh, art. Um, so I assume you're working on that and looking towards it in whatever way you can. I realize that uh, that's a whole different scope. And there are those out there who say, well, you can't even do any of that for 18 months or until a vaccine's in place. But um, certainly PE minutes are going to be difficult next year. Um, don't know how you do that. So I guess I would second uh, John's motion, you know, whether or not you have certainty in what you're doing, I, I believe that um, we should have some understanding of even the possibilities sooner rather than later and I would fully support an additional May meeting um, or early June even to, uh, to try and step forward going forward. 
into next fall. I, I do not want to be caught unawares as to, oh, well, there were five options and we settled on this one. Okay. Just, Thank you. Just to assure you, Trustee Paff, oh, we would never intend to do that kind of a surprise to anyone. I think our, um, you know, as soon as we hear information, we're trying to relay it. Um, sometimes we delay a little when we're trying to figure out what, um, what it means, what we're hearing. But um, yeah, absolutely. As soon as we I, get the information, we, we want to lay it out. I understand, Ralph. It's just, you know, and this, is, this is an incredibly crunched scenario. So, so trying to get together with a special meeting on a Saturday seems, you know, even if we're just saying, okay, here's one possibility, here's another possibility, and we spend two hours just walking through, I think that would be useful. So thanks. Okay, thanks, John. Um, Brian, I'll go back to you, Christy. Uh, I don't have anything to add. I appreciate the others' comments, and uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that for right now. Thank you. Okay, John Walton. Yeah, I just you know, I, and I appreciate your update, Ralph. And I understand, you know, it's hard to plan for a future that's unpredictable. And I think you did a good job laying out all the challenges related to that. But at the same time, you know, we're we're trying, and I say we, it's more you all are trying to balance, you know, closing the year out as well as possible uh, for the seniors and the and the kids who are getting promotions and things like that. And I appreciate you all are spending time just keeping, you know, keeping school going. Uh, you know, school's not closed. It's just in this very uh, kind of weird distance learning emergency situation right now. And find, and find the right balance that closes it out in an imperfect situation for, for all the students and families, but at the same time, um, even not knowing what next year is going to look like, I think the anxiety is starting to grow uh, with parents and teachers not not even really feeling like. And I and I know you're kicking off some uh, some groups, but you know people want to start planning for next year, and I think the anxiety is that the school year is going to end. The, the teachers are going to go on a well-deserved break, and hopefully the admin staff will too. We won't have talked through some of these options or ideas or possibilities, and everyone will spend the summer very anxious about coming back to a new school year, really not knowing uh, what to be prepared for. And I, you know, I think we've done, and again, we, you all have done the best you can in an emergency situation with learning, handing out Chromebooks, and, and people just, you know, coming up with lessons plans and, and making do the best I can. But, you know, we talked about this, I think, in previous meetings, that there has to be lessons learned, things that we learn from this or could do better or do differently that will ease people's anxiety and, and make it as good as possible going into next year, not knowing, you know, all the variables or, or what the state or, or county will do. So, you know, I just want to advocate I think the sooner we you, you set up those groups of parents and teachers to start talking about this at each school site, the sooner we have a special meeting where the public can come and provide input if they don't have time to go to those uh, focus group meetings. Um, maybe even get you know our input on a few of those ideas of what we feel comfortable with, uh, knowing you know with all the caveats that you don't know the future. Uh, I just think it would be good, and you know whether. Whether we do it during a weeknight or a weekend, I, I think we just have to find the time to do it before the school year's over. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, um, Ralph, did you have anything that you wanted to respond to that or no? No, no I'm, I'm listening intently. I, I agree with okay. everything that's said for sure. Just... Okay, thank you. Okay, Christy, back to you. I see you now, you're unmuted. Well, I, I don't know what happened, but when Ralph was speaking, I, I had an unstable internet so I missed almost everything it kept kicking me oh. off and then coming back um, I would just like to say that whatever the board can do uh, I think it's wonderful for us to to support you and the staff uh, throughout the district on the direction being taken so if that entails meetings and I think that's I'm all for it that's it thanks Christy Debbie? Yes. Uh, we got a late uh, note from Sean Keller too, which I want to acknowledge here because whether or not, you know, some of these are uh, they're just ideas. And I really want to say uh, thank you to that advisory for getting it out and 
and pushing it out as quickly as it did. It seems like this was yesterday to today. And whether or not I you know, agree or disagree with any of the ideas, I really appreciate seeing them at this point. Thank you very much. Are you talking about the email that he sent? Yeah, this afternoon. Yeah, yeah we should have uh, acknowledged that also during co um, correspondence or um, anyway, communication, written communication. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, I, um, this is just an information discussion item. Um, we do have some public comments, so bear with me while I read um, all of the uh, PC uh, public comments here. Uh, Sean Keller, here, here to PGUSD voters and taxpayers, thank you for Measure A funding, plus great job by our tech committee in making a solid tech plan and spending wisely. Um, several thank yous for the graduation ideas. Public comment from Jeannie Trayback. I'm grateful for the updates from the district. Our district is doing a great job. I'd like to ask that our district make our own tentative plans for the fall with the inclusive of parent voices, especially if parents are going to be supporting the distant learning from home. We as parents need to evaluate these plans and have greater voice if the district plans to continue in these directions. Okay, uh, just know too that we, we keep a log of all these comments, so the district will be um, reviewing that. Okay, public comment from Angela. I saw another high school who was lining up the senior pictures in front of the school before they were distributed to parents. I know we're doing those um, signs. I'm not sure what that plan is to that. Um, I know the um, high school PTA, I believe she's the president. Uh, we can check with her. Um, public comment from um, Ani Silva. Our administrative team meets every day to discuss all aspects of moving forward for the fall to ensure we are creating a safe space for all students and staff, whether it be in distance learning and or social distancing environment. Okay, again, I'm just going to read the public comments. Uh, we do keep your, uh, your notes um, on a log that is published on the website, so you can always go there to refer to that um, if it's not an actual public comment. Okay, bringing back to the board, um, uh, Dr. Porras, thanks again for the detail um, update, um, and um, I'm sure in your daily updates you'll let us know as things change mm -hmm. and how we can support. You guys. Uh, Madam President? Yes. Oh, I just want to say something real quick. Oh, of course. <laughs> it's all good. Adrian. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Porras, for everything you do, um, especially with your team. And uh, because uh, as a senior and seeing it from my perspective and then talking to the other seniors, um, it's just a really powerful thing to kind of see uh, the faculty actually caring enough for us to put on this ceremony. And even though uh, this plan might not work out, uh, we we thoroughly enjoy whatever you guys are going to put on for us. And no matter what you do, you can't disappoint us. Cool. So uh, I hope to throw my cap through my, uh, through my uh, sunroof of my <laughs> car. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Appreciate your comments. Thank you so much. Okay, Adrian, thanks for <laughs> making me emotional. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, thanks. Um, give me a second. It's okay. Uh, future agenda items. Um, uh, Dr. Porras, I guess we, we um, are all in agreement that we want to add a meeting um, to discuss our plans. Yes. Um, when, I think, is the question. Um, uh, last day of school is the 29th or is that correct yes that's correct okay um we have a meeting on the second um i know um john Moulton, you mentioned that you'd like to meet before the end of the school year june 2nd is pretty close um I, I would propose that we put it on june 2nd and with the uh caveat that we might have an emergency meeting if plans change and the district needs to get our, our feedback. Um, 
Christy, how do you feel about that? I just want to make sure we stay in order. June 2nd for a meeting to discuss plans or sooner if needed. I think you might be muted, Christy. John Path, did you have any question? No, that's fine. June 2nd. Uh, Brian? Uh, June 2nd would be just fine. Yeah, okay. that works. John Walton, are you okay with that plan? You know, I really would like to hear what the recommendation from the teachers and administration are, how much time. I mean, I, what I'm worried about is, you know, they need as much prep time as possible uh, right. for next school year. So it's not really what's convenient for me. I'm, I'm really interested right. what the teachers and administration feel like, you know, if, if you wait for the second to John Pass point in and say, well, we're only going to have one meeting. We're out of time. We don't really have time to talk about it. We'll just figure it out when we come back. And I think we've done ourselves and them a disservice. So, uh, you know, I'm supportive of whatever the administration and teachers want. Uh, and I will rearrange my schedule as needed. Yeah, uh, of course. Um, we'll go back to Dr. Porras regarding that date. I just, um, based on his um, update that things are changing, they don't really know yet and they may not know, but maybe they will. And then we can have emergency meeting if we need to. But um, I think just to put it on the calendar, um, Dr. Porras, how do you feel about that June 2nd date? Well, we, and we, we can certainly have uh, information for you on the second. We can certainly shoot for earlier. I think the best that we're probably going to be able to provide is a, really just sort of a, a menu of if this, then that in regards to sort of solutions. Um, like we can talk about um, distance learning options that we are putting together regardless, because regardless, we know there, there's going to need to be distance learning. So we will be able to put some information together and get feedback earlier than June on that. Um, the, the pieces that will be most unknown will be just when, we, when will we start school and what will the actual schedules look like? That will be much more difficult. And we can put together some scenarios for evaluation knowing that some or all of them may not happen. So. Um, I mean, we could certainly shoot for the last, um, the last week of, of May or the, let's see, the, anywhere after the 18th. Ralph, how do you feel about the 25th? Here's, oh. here's my line of thought, Ralph. The, 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 um, you want the May revised from the governor, which is what, the 15th, 14th, 15th? Yeah, okay. but I don't know. How, okay. The so anything before, first. well, because if he suddenly says, you know, we're going to cut all finances by 30%, we have a whole different vote that that you're we just haven't even considered yet yeah. um and then we have a meeting on the 21st anyway and so anywhere later in the week of uh that week is you know you're really crunching against your 29th graduation right mm -hmm. uh, well the 25th is a holiday um memorial so, uh, day memorial day um, for you wait a minute well, it's Memorial Day. <laughs> so, so let's let's uh, let's say that we could have um, that discussion on the twenty first. Uh, we can. I can bring if we have. If well, if we, if uh, I mean these meetings are certainly ending by eight thirty or nine. So we if we you know we could put a couple hours to the dialogue, based on the current trend. Otherwise, okay. um, a special meeting um, on the twenty sixth. We could put something together. I think. I'm trying to see. Uh, Tuesday. Uh, I would very much like to dedicate just to this. Okay, so you want a special meeting? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, I don't think we need to um, decide on an actual date and time now. I think, um, Dr. Porras, if you want to come up with a date then shortly after the 21st. Okay. Uh, let me, uh, when uh, next week, when uh, we'll kind of gather, get the administrative perspective in regards to just kind of where are we with current status and see what we can put together and come up with a date. Um, and uh, we'll aim for somewhere around that, the 26th time for okay. sure. But um, if we can do it sooner, we will. And if we need later, we'll let you know. How's that sound? Okay. Sounds good to me. If you need a morning, I'll take the day off. And um, that is um, going to be open um, session, right? Not a closed session item. It'll be open session. Actually, uh, okay. Trustee Papp brings up a great point. I don't know um, if the time of day matters. Well, yeah. for this, uh, not for me, I'll make it happen. Well, I think a lot of folks are working from home. I, don't, I know we're working from home, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I am working, but I know I'm that the, school, the teachers got a lot going on with yeah. the classroom, so probably the afternoon or evening would be better. Okay.
um, just for those um, on on the meeting, um, just so you know that that I just wanted to bring that up that this will be an open session so everybody will be um, able to join and listen in and won't be like a closed session type of thing. So, okay. Any other future agenda items to discuss board? Christy? No, nope, you're shaking your head. Okay, John, any other future agenda? I, I'm shaking my head. I, I keep getting muted when I'm kicked off. No, I have nothing else to add. Thanks so much. Okay. Uh, John Path? No, I'm good. Thank you. All right. Uh, Brian, any other uh, future? Uh, I'm all good. Thank you, Debbie. Okay. Uh, John Walton? Nothing. Okay. I lost my agenda. Uh, Item, but I believe we are ready to close. Is that correct? I'm Any public comment on future agenda items? Yeah, well, are we went through the, oh, for public, you're right, thank you. Um, uh, any public comment for um, future agenda items other than what we've discussed? I'm seeing none right away. Um, okay, so we'll bring it back and um, ready to adjourn the meeting. I, I do, as always, uh, really want to thank everybody, all the participants. We currently have 46 on. Um, so I really appreciate your time and um, just patience and efforts and everything that everybody's doing um, during this time. So everybody take care. Stay healthy and talk to you virtually soon. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> okay. Bye, up. everybody. Thanks, everybody. Be safe. Bye. Good job, Debbie. Oh, thanks. Bye. Bye bye now.